Hello guys, Adam Antium here and today I'm bringing you a new series and that series is Crusader Kings 2. Um, if you guys have never heard of this game, it's an absolutely uh, amazing game. It's a grand strategy game where you basically take control of a single player or a single dynasty and you uh, see that dynasty through until um, I think it's 1452 or 3. Um, it's basically the fall of Constantinople, so when the Ottomans take over there in, in real history. Um, but in that time a lot of things can change um, you basically have these stats, I've just downloaded the DLC, the old gods, uh, it's the newest DLC and that's, uh, oops, sorry, just scratch my head that's what we'll be playing today, but you, the normal start is 1066 uh, just after, just before William the, the Conqueror's invasion of England and as I say, a lot could happen <coughs> excuse me um, I actually played uh, a game Quite a while, well, it was a couple of months ago now. As Munster, these two, these two, uh, it's a, a duchy of Munster. This guy, and um, I eventually took over Ireland, I took over most of the British Isles. Um, I took over the, the, it was the northern half of Spain, and I inherited the kingdom of France. So basically, all of this was just Irish. Um, but in that time, other things can happen, like the the Great Khan comes um, west. Uh, and pretty much takes over all of this unless there's a strong unified country uh, these are all pagans and uh, Muslims I also have the Sword of Islam DLC which lets you play these um, but like I said today we're going to be starting the old gods um, yeah this is DLC released it's basically a, he plays a viking um, I've also downloaded the Norse spaces which is pretty cool um, and we are going to play as this guy King Hal Halfdan Whiteshirt of Jorvik um, Jorvik is pretty much Yorkshire where I live in England um, so I thought it'd be cool to play and I uh, had a little practice um, and yeah I, I really liked it it was quite a, a cool um, start to the game so yeah we're gonna play that so let's uh, let's get into it so we'll just click on play so uh, in case any of you don't know Jorvik um, is modern day York uh, and York says you see the castle uh, is Jorvik which would be York St. Peter's, the Barony of Richmond which isn't far from where I live and Scarabog that's uh, modern day Scarborough the port town as you can see here um, yeah what happened was um, well obviously in 18, just before 1867 uh, the Vikings came and attacked. Uh, oh, I forgot it's there. Excuse me. Uh, they attacked. What we are oh, Lindisfarne, Lindisfarne, yeah. What we know we call um, the Holy Islands. And Britain was split into these kingdoms. There was um, Northumberland, Mercia, Wessex, and East Anglia. So this was I can't remember what it was. I think this might have been in the 700. And basically they took over um, the north half of England um, which was called the Danelaw and then it wasn't until King Alfred uh, the Great um, kind of sort of rose up and pushed them back north and eventually unified England as the country it is today and that basically started our laws, our language um, and, and yeah so it's a really interesting part of history but we are going to play as the Danes, as the Norse as half done and we're hopefully going to unite England um, as a Viking country instead of a Saxon country. So let's get into it. Um, if any of you have never heard, well, some of you might not have heard of this game. It's basically like say, I have this dynasty, this Hipsterk, Sirk dynasty, and my job is to make sure that this dynasty survives by having heirs. So as you can see, I have three heirs. Uh, this is my the heir to my kingdom, uh, Siegfried, and he will inherit. Jorvik, but as we go into our laws, it will say that our laws are agnatic, cognatic, gravel kind, and this basically means that only an heir can inherit, but it's gravel kind, so whatever I have gets split up between my three heirs, but in the minute I only have Jorvik, uh, so the, the one county will go to my what my eldest heir, but say I took over Northumberland, which I, who you start off at war with, and I have like however many counties those when I die will go to also go to my heirs so it'll be split up 
So the, ideally you want to change the law to absolute, um, is it absolute cognatic? Uh, it might even be I need to form a kingdom, maybe. I think it's cog yeah, it's cognatic. No. I can't remember. <laughs> it's one of the ones. Agnatic succession, I think. It doesn't really tell you what it does anymore. Uh, but basically where your eldest son um, inherits everything. And these buttons appear. So uh, the first one is your council. So you have a chancellor, a marshal, a steward, a spy master, and a seer. And you can allocate these where the chancellor has improved diplomatic relations. So a good way to get allies. Fabricate claims, a good way to claim land. And so descent, a good way to make your enemies f uh, in fight. The marshal has suppressed revolts, so if you have a revolt risk in your kingdom, uh, it'll lower that percentage of revolt uh, risk. You can train troops, so it, it makes your um, your troops obviously retrain quicker. And research military tech, which we'll get onto in a minute. The steward has to collect taxes, so he can you put him in one of your kingdoms, and he'll more f efficiently collect your taxes. You can obviously construction, so you can um, exit this window. You can upgrade these. And he'll make it, as you can see, it takes so many days and so much gold. He'll make it go quicker. And he can also research economic tech. Uh, your spy master is a very important character. Um, he's, if you scheme in your own city, you want to do it in your capital city. Um, he'll protect you from other plots. If you build a spy network, you want to do that in someone else's city. Normally, if you're trying to assassinate someone, uh, it, high, it raises your percentage of uh, success. And again, it's study technology and the seer this button is basically convert so you can convert um, non-believers into your religion but they have to be within your um, your domain so you're in your kingdom and so as you click on here you can see the rest of Britain is Catholic and I'm not oh sorry <laughs> my nose is blocked yeah the rest of the um, kingdom is not so hopefully if I win this while I'll conquer all of this up here um, so I'll have to try and convert it to make sure that they're happier. That's research cultural tech and that's improved religious relations. Uh, so normally you do it with whoever the head of the religion is. So what we're going to do, we're going to set our Chancellor to fabricate claims down here. Try and get a claim on the Kingdom of Mercia. Or the Petty Kingdom of Mercia. Our Marshal is currently leading our troops so he can stay there. Our Steward can collect taxes. Our Spy Master can scheme. And he can just talk to himself basically so here's your technology so this is what I'm talking about um, if you set your steward or your spy master to research technology um, you normally want to do it down here because this is where most of the technology comes from the Byzantine Empire and uh, once you grow as you can see like my technology oops is really low like if you look at these bars they have good ships obviously because of Vikings but other than that it's nothing but if you come over here it's significantly higher, so it gets lower, and I think the Muslims have uh, quite high ones as well, yeah. So yeah, so that's technology. This is military, this is obviously where you raise your troops. Um, I must have, I'm not sure how I have that many troops, but for some reason I do, and this is where you can raise more of them, or you can raise your fleet, or you can also raise uh, by mercenaries once you have enough gold, which is up here. Uh, the next one is intrigue, so this is where you choose a plot, uh, normally to try and kill someone. Or you can hold events, or invite people to court, so you can go on a grand hunt, uh, commission a runestone, and these give you things such as prestige, which is this one. Uh, and that basically um, makes the more prestige you have, means other characters will like you more. And piety also means that characters will like you more the more you have. Uh, this window of factions is if there's someone scheming against you, they can st start an official faction. Normally, it's to either lower crown authority or to um, let to make someone else become king. And this is your religion, so it tells you what your moral authority is and who these kind of leaders are. So that's yeah, the Seer of Saint Peter's. Okay, and then up here, that's gold, your prestige. We talked about the piety. Domain, so that's basically how many holdings you can have, um, and I can hold three, and I currently have one. That's how many holdings you have within your realm, 
and that's your score. So once your your character dies, it takes your prestige. I think it's prestige and piety. Add them together, or it might just be prestige maybe, and and there. And eventually, when you play through to the end of the the game, or the end of the timeline, it it gives you a final score and it lets you know where you are on like a leaderboard. I think you can do it on as an online leaderboard as well. Um. Yeah, so it tells you where you are and where you rank with other famous families from history. Uh, and I think the final thing we'll just talk about as the introduction is these. These are your stats. So you have diplomacy, uh, martial, stewardship, intrigue, and learning. And if you look back at our council, it's basically chancellor, martial, obviously steward, uh, spymaster, and seer. And these stats are based on your um, your traits. So these are your traits, and each one, as you can see, has a plus and negative. So this is skill tactician. This has six plus six and martial plus one intrigue plus one stewardship minus one learning and plus 0 0.5 health. Uh, Viking plus one martial hunter plus one martial ambitious. So that's a good trait. Have plus two to everything. Wrath. That's kind of a negative trait, but giving me more martial and so on and so forth. And these base. Um, on how good you are so the higher diplomacy you have the more people will like you the higher martial you have the better at leading troops you'll be the higher stewardship you have the more di the main you'll be able to have the higher intrigue you have the more um, easily you'll be able to pull off plots and the higher learning you have uh, I don't I'm not quite sure what learning is for I normally uh, just leave it <laughs> just don't concentrate on that these are um, the titles I hold, so I hold the Petty Kingdom of Jorvik and the County of Jorvik, which is obviously here. And uh, that's it. So these things up here are your prompts, so it says we, we have one week claim. So we can put a claim on Denmark, but I don't want to do that, so I'll just right click to turn it off. I can call in allies to this war, which I'll do, I'll send that. Uh, my rulers are married, so I need to get him a wife. My heir is unmarried, so I need to get him a wife, but first I need to pick an ambition. So I'm going to choose the ambition to become married. And we'll see who we have. Uh, I want someone who is Norse and of the same religion, and someone who she she'd be good. She's only 16, which in this game is good because you want a, a woman who can give you lots of children. Um, she has good math, it's good stewardship, which I always like. Uh, okay, entry, good learning, which is good because mine's not that high, and good uh, diplomacy. So we shall. Uh, invite her to marry it. She will lose prestige for this because she's a courtier but it shouldn't be too bad. We can get it back when we get married. And our, our son. Um, we also want someone who's got this. Uh, Ingrid. She's pretty good. I don't like the fact that she has quite a high intrigue but uh, it'll do. Okay. And um, another important thing about this is that it's, it's a real time. It's like... Um, a real time game so it obviously plays in real time but you can speed it up so if I set this down here that's the lowest uh, little thing and it goes up to five and obviously things are starting to happen happen uh, compressed to the deserve claims but we'll leave it out for now and uh, let's start again so I'm at war with this guy the Duke of Northumberland or the, the King of Northumberland now um, and he's called Mercia into excuse me, you can see Mercia into the battle, uh, I've offered, I've asked one of my allies to join me, so hopefully he'll join me. This guy uh, is just a raider, I think, who'd be raiding the Saxons and the Catholics. So yeah, so let's start. We'll put it on um, like level three. So I'm basically going to take my troops, going to put leaders in, into it to make sure that it gives me the best chance. I don't want to be leading it myself because I don't want my my uh, leader to get injured or maimed and we'll start it so we'll just see how it plays through okay so King Halfdan and Yerja England have gotten married we can collect a royal aid duty to pay for the ceremony so if I say yes it's everyone's concern I get four gold but if I say no I get um, prestige uh, 100 prestige which is what I lost for marrying a courtier so we'll get that back it takes us back into the plus prestige and most excellent king, your wisdom, mercy, legendary. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's what's just happened. So now I'm married, and it should prompt me. Yeah, 
has uh, fulfilled the ambition to get married. So now I'm going to choose a new ambition. And because I have three, normally you choose to have a son, but because I already have three sons, I'm going to have a daughter instead. Which, it doesn't say what it does, but I think it gives you a plus fertility bonus, so it means you have a higher chance of, of having more children. And speaking of children, we'll get our children married off. Um, I'm not too bothered about who they marry, to be honest. I just have to remember not to, um, not to give them to people that I've already tried to marry, so she'll do for him, and I think the other guy is already married. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on. So, uh, Sigrid and Gerda Ingrid have got married. Um, we'll gain another 100 prestige, just to make sure people like us. I'm a sexton king. Yes, so my ally's going to join the war. I'm going to turn these down. Um, should I in the high? Uh, I never, can never remember how this works. Disable. Yeah, disable that message. Fine. So that shouldn't pop up and keep annoying me. So let's take, try and capture this army. Uh, this means my council position's open. So my steward, because he's my son, uh, he's got married. Oh, that's, yeah, so my other son's been come married. So Bishop Offa, the preacher in the service of King Charles II of West Francia, has arrived in York to spread the gospel of their foreign religion. He has little regard for our royal faith, declaring it sinful, and he has explained in detail the horrors that we shall suffer in the afterlife unless we mend our ways. So there are horrors to suffer in this life as well, friend. So basically the bishop is imprisoned by me, and the king of West Francia uh, dislikes me by 20% for, tw uh, for 24 months, or tell us more of God. The King of Frankia's opinion of me changes by 10, so plus 10. And he, the bishop, does his missionary work and we're going to put him in jail. Basically, opinion, um, so if you look here, his, that, that is there is his opinion of me, so he's plus 22. He likes my state diplomacy, he's high. Uh, he's the same dentist as me. I'm a Viking and I have high prestige. Um, so, oh, that's why he's gone to that court. Okay. Um, but see, her, she, oh, she has 22 as well. Got someone. <laughs> they all have 22. But if you see up here, this is her opinion of him. So she dislikes him only just. Uh, he has a short reign and he's humble, be proud. She's, she must be humble, is she? Yeah, humble and he's proud, so they conflict. But he likes her 16 because they're both honest. So that's how opinion works. And you want to try and get your vassals, who are the people underneath you, to have a high opinion of you as possible. Okay, so they seem to have scattered. We'll try and move into down here. And take this battle. This little marker here means I have a negative um, like battle uh, factor. So that's why that came up. I might just put the speed up a little bit just to catch it. Oh god, there's ones everywhere. So victory. I'm going here, don't want him seizing our thing. So our prisoner, um, Bishop Off on a Fleury, is complaining about his dark cell in the dungeon, asking for more suitable accommodation. Uh, we'll let him rot for now. We'll s actually, we'll see if we can ransom him. So if you go to your intrigue, prisoners, uh, he's got an opinion for me. I can't ransom him. So I'm just going to release him from prison, just so it stops pestering me. Oh, and they brought Scotland into the war as well. Okay, so the spectre of Hungary is ever present. Fear for the defenders, for cruel arithmetic of a siege means that as defenders of Jorvik starve to their death, there is more food for those that remain. So that means I have losses because of the siege, but the siege is going to win now. Okay, victory. Uh, we'll come up here because he has quite a good army. Uh, and we're going to siege this. Um, this button here means you can rush the siege or your assault. You want to do it if you have more than 10 times what they have. So they have 546 and I have 6,668. 6, so I have over 10 times the amount. I'm just going to turn the thing down a little bit just for explaining sake. This guy in blue is my ally. <laughs> That's why he's in blue with this guy as well. So they're coming to help me uh, take on, and he's joined the siege, so he's taking it up to over 8,000. So we should win this. And down here, this, this little school means he's getting attrition, so he's going to lose troops. 
Okay, so after successful siege, your men drag Erfel fled out of a hidey hole. Okay, and victory on the siege. So that basically means that Erfel fled is now my prisoner. Can I get a ransom for her? Yeah, so I can ransom her for 10 gold. That'll do for me. Um, and then again, we're going to rush this siege. Uh, to the magnificent King Halfden, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept paying your ransom for the safe return of Count Erfel fled. Okay, so that's another siege one. And as you can see, as you win sieges, you, this is your war score, so I'm winning by 20%. And that's also affected by battles, and if they siege you as well. So then I'm going to come down here and stop this guy sieging my army, sieging my capital. I think he's the King of Scotland. So we should easily beat this guy. Okay, victory. Uh, I will go after him. And he's going to try and run away. So the, the cook has prepared a magnificent meal with lots of different fruits, various kinds of meat, plenty of freshly baked bread, and several mature cheeses. I tried to eat modestly, but the food is too good. So again, the trait gluttonous, which takes away stewardship, which I don't want. I satisfy my hunger with bread and water. So again, this trait temperate, which gives me plus two stewardship. So now my stewardship has gone up to nine, which means I get an extra demens, uh, domain. So I can hold four, four counties now, which is good, because hopefully I'll win this war and I'll, I'll uh, get a lot more counties. I see that guy's going to die, so I'm, uh, I'm going to kill this guy first, even though he can't siege. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, siege this guy's capital. Okay, and I'm going to rush it because they only have 300 men and I have 11,000. Okay, victory. Kill the. Kill those. Uh, how do I select my army? What's going on here? I think because they're battling, I can't siege. But there we go. So, I'll siege it again. And that's victory. So my score's gone up to 62%. And once my this is your morale up here. So you want a full morale before you can siege. And as you'll see, their morale will lower. Once I press that. Okay, treachery. Over the bane of defending garrison, the word uh, is out. Someone has made contact with the attackers. Only a few know for sure. The rest, uh, the rest is the rest. It is a matter of speculation. The defenders of your vic are sure that this move means their days are numbered, so the seed is planted. Okay, so let's finish the siege and then we'll come and um, finish off this little army down here who are getting attrition. Okay, so basically these lines mean there's different stages. There's like two dotted lines and then there's a thicker dotted line and then there's a striped line. When you have the stripes, that means you've seized the whole, the whole um, county. So you've seized the castle, the town and the bishopric. Okay, so let's uh, chase after this guy, hopefully beat him. I don't think this guy has any, uh, the Duke of Northumberland has any more troops really after this, so it might it might be the end of the war for us. Okay, so that's the end of that. Unfortunately it's not the end of the war, so we'll continue on. Might just put the speed up a little bit just whilst we're chasing after these people. Uh, we'll attack. That's start saving, that's why it's for us. Okay, victory. Yes, so you see how it's a little dotted line. That means I've only seized the uh, one. Yeah, seized the castle. Okay. So, that one, because I had so many troops in there, so little it's seized on its own. And then the final one has quite a lot of troops in, so I might just let this run through. See these guys, uh, Mega no Meds no more. The King of Megas Almos has decided to settle down in the Carafian Carf Basin, making it the new homeland of the Mega tribes. So I think there's this there's this event uh, that's Hungary basically, the creation of Hungary. Oh, Lothrangia. Be cool. Uh, so let's finish the siege, please.
Okay, uh, the Varangian Guard. Basilios, the great king of the Greeks, is straught over the poor metal of his countrymen. Knowing well our, our skill in battle, knowing well our skill in battle, he has decided to form a bodyguard consisting solely of Norse warriors. Those who serve him in the great city of Mikulingrad, which is the Norse word for Constantinople, are generously rewarded. And even now, many of our young men, eager for riches and adventure, have departed for Greece to pick up his banner. So yeah, this was a uh, these are real events that happened in history. There was a bodyguard for the the emperors of Constantinople that were made up of uh, vi well, basically Vikings, yeah. Um, and they served there. I remember watching a program about uh, about um, Byzantium, and it was showing you the the Hagia Sophia, like the big. Let's see if it's on here. Uh, it doesn't say. But the Hagia Sophia, which is is now a mosque, but what was then was one of the, I think it was like the biggest building in the world. Um, and it was a church. And how there was north, north carvings in, in the stone where north soldiers had been positioned there to guard the emperor, which I thought was pretty cool. So okay, so we beat that little army. Our war score is now 100%. So we click on this, we offer peace. We enforce our demands, which means... I gain 500 prestige and 250 piety. This plus 5 cent to mo Norse moral authority. I gain 263 prestige for, from the war contribution. This guy loses, I think it's 500 prestige. I occupy all his territory and I take uh, all the vassals, all the titles in the Kingdom of England. So that basically means I can become the King of England now, I think. Okay. So the, the sons of Lobrock invasion of Northumberland has ended. It's King Halton the first of York. So yes, yeah, so I basically in invaded. Do I have any land over it? No. Okay. So that was a, a victory. Um, and I think I'm going to end the episode here. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, this is honestly a game that I absolutely love. And uh, I'm going to be trying to play a whole playthrough. Hopefully take over England. Um, what do these mean? One title so I can create the Duchy of Northumberland now. Yeah, and I need to sort all this out, but I'll show you guys how to do that in the next episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Um, please remember to leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or tips for me, just uh, leave them in the comments below. And if you want to see more, uh, just subscribe to my channel. And yes, so, oh, and if you'd like to become uh, my friend on Steam, my Steam account is uh, Adam the Fifth, all one word. So, just. Uh, just add me as a friend if you'd like to get in contact or play with me on any games then that'd be really cool so thanks a lot guys and i'll see you in the next video